Hey guys, this is going to be a gear guide. Hopefully everything you'll need to know about gear, what gear to keep, what gear to put on certain characters, what stats to look out for, the best sets that you'll want for different types of characters, and yeah, pretty much everything you, you might need to know. Stat goals that you might want to focus on. So we'll get into it now. And I'm planning to break this down by what you need to know as a beginner, as a mid-level player or a mid-progress player and an end game player. So we'll start with beginner. If you're new to Water of Realms and you want to know about gear and you're not getting even epic drops just yet, then my suggestion would be just focus on progression in the campaign. You can buy epic from the store. Just get this stuff. Don't worry too much about the stats. Upgrade it to level 8 and just move on until you get to legendary yellow drops which is where i'll begin the video at the mid game at this point there's no point in spending time farming for purple drops it's not going to take you very far you're going to get rid of them very quickly so just get through that and come back to this and watch the next segment when you're when you're starting to get into legendary drops because then you can start being more particular about what you take and what you do with it so now we're assuming that you're into the mid game so now we'll talk about mid game players next Let's say that you're starting to farm some of the later levels of the different gear raids and perhaps you're in stages 9 to 12 or maybe even some of the early like stage 13 is usually a block. So at this point you're starting to think how do I progress? What do I do to get stronger so that I can get through to the later levels in the gear raids 1 to 3? First things first, what gear to keep? You are going to want to sell all of your flat stat gear. HP, attack, defense. This is explicitly for the right side of your screen. The left side gear, the weapon and the chest armor are both fixed. The weapon will always be flat attack, the chest armor will always be flat HP. But on the right side you want to be focusing on the percentage based stats. You do not want to have flat HP, flat attack or flat defense. A flat HP legendary drop, so a yellow piece of gear, will have 2000 health at level 12. Whereas a HP percent one will have 34% at level 12 for the same type of gear. So 34% versus 2000. Even this guy, Boro at 4 star, he would benefit more from 34% than he would from 2000. So even low level, it's better to just ignore flat stats. So that's the first point of order. You want to ignore flat stats. The second, if you're worried about the gear set that it belongs to, doesn't matter. At this point, you don't care. Focusing on building stats it sets is not really worth it over prioritizing the right main stat and the good substats. So that doesn't matter for the moment. Primarily the way you decide what gear to keep or the way I've done it is I want at least one usable substat because otherwise you start eating through your cash reserves. In terms of if you're worried about upgrading gear, don't be too worried. It's not that expensive at this point. It's only when you get into myth gear does it start really eating into your gold reserves. So you are more than free to upgrade stuff as long as it's worth keeping, i.e. It's not flat and it has usable subs on it. So what I mean by usable subs is if it's a DPS unit, you will be hoping for attack percent on almost all three of your slots. And this we'll get into later. But at this stage when you're mid game, you will primarily be looking at attack percent. So you'll be looking for attack percent as the primary stat and you will want as a sub mainly crit chance would be ideal, but most things will be OK. It's, it's at this point to get started you're after just gear that has the, the correct main stat and you want to have a decent sub rage regen rage regen efficiency hp bonus is good on fighters stuff like that so for a dps you want to have crit chance as an ideal secondary sub stat but other than that durability and rage regen is good as well if you are a ranger it's similar as follows if you're a mage same as well the only difference may be if the unit requires a lot of rage regen focus, then sometimes you can focus on that more. But as a general rule of thumb, when you're at the mid game stage and you can't pick and choose what gear to have, then focus on attack percent. If you are starting to get better gear and you're starting to get one to two decent subs on your gear, then you can start focusing on really pushing for your crit chance to get higher. Take a one of your three slots, take as a crit chance slot and try to focus on your other two slots having crit chance subs. Now, the reason I say this and the reason I've decided to avoid crit damage, crit damage will only be useful when you crit, which sounds obvious. It's easy to overestimate it. If your crit chance is 60%, 40% of the time, nearly half of the time, your entire crit damage is not giving you any benefit whatsoever. 
when you could be pushing your attack up and having that consistently grant you benefits. If you have a unit that relies heavily on crits in order to proc their effects or their skills, then you may want to consider giving them two crit chance as their primary slot just to make sure that they get to 90 to 100% crit chance. But you need to consider if you're pushing to that level, you want to make sure that your attack is still over 100% in the bonus. So the number, the green number is higher than the number on the left. Otherwise, you're not going to be doing a great deal of damage if this is for a damage unit. For defenders, you're going to want to focus on HP bonus for their primary stat. Defense bonus also works as well as it increases their effective HP. Though I have found through just focusing HP bonus, they are more than tanky enough as it is. I personally tend to focus on offensive subs, but this is more for a late game build. If you're mid game, you will want to focus on the opposite of the two. So it's a HP main, defense sub, defense main, HP sub. And also rage regen goes a long way as a sub. But attack bonus, you can never go wrong. I would avoid focusing on crit chance and crit damage because if they're a defender, you are unlikely to reach a high enough threshold for it to be relevant. Now again, for mid game, if you are building a healer, you're going to be focusing on primarily healing effect, but depending on the healer, they will scale differently. Vortex scales on health, so I've given him a lot of health bonus. Mine is also only five star and he was having trouble staying alive, so I've given him two HP percents. As for subs, if the primary stat is healing effect, then the subs you'll want to be the stat that they scale on, such as HP bonus in this case. Or if the primary stat is the stat that they scale on, you want to focus on the healing effect as the sub. As for secondary and tertiary stats, for subs you will mainly want to focus on Raid Regen Efficiency and Raid Regen. Crit Rate does nothing for healers, ignore it. Crit Damage likewise does nothing for healers. So being tankier and having more regen is very nice. Attack Speed is also nice. Now that about covers the early and mid game. If you are starting to push towards mid to late game progress, perhaps you are starting to do some of the later gear raid. Maybe you're around stage 12, stage 13 and you want to progress further. You're now getting some decent gear, you're starting to get one to two decent substats and you're actually being able to build towards stuff. The way I would suggest you build your fighters is slightly different. So as we're assuming that you're starting to get two, maybe three decent substats, you'll be focusing on attack bonus and crit chance primarily as your main stat. And you're looking for crit chance and crit damage and attack bonus as the substats. So whatever you have as a main, you want the other two as your subs, that's the ideal. How high they roll, obviously you want higher, that's great. But if they roll low, even if it's just within the first two bars, that's still a benefit and that's still more useful than flat stats. And it will go along further than something like healing effect. So it sucks, but it still gives you the benefits you need. Once you've got to around 80-90% crit chance, you can start pushing on crit damage. If you're at the stage where you have a attack bonus, you've got good crit rate sub, you have another item with crit chance on it, and you have high enough crit chance now, and you still have a third piece of spare, then you can use it to build crit damage. But that is only really at the point when you're on 80 to 90% crit chance. Before that, you don't want to use the slot. But if you're at the point where you're getting good enough gear, that you can push on to 80-90% plus crit chance, then you can start using crit damage as a main stat. But I would limit this to only one. The return is not good enough to have two crit damage. You're better off having an attack and a crit damage and a crit chance. But again, the goal here is that the green number should be around 150% of the left number or at least 100%. The crit chance should, this is overkill, but the crit chance should at least be around 80 to 90%. And then your crit damage will want to roughly equal the effect that you have in your attack. So this attack is probably around 150%. And if you include... The 50% from the bonus because 100% is just base damage right the 50% is the additional damage so 50 plus 91 is around 141 so that roughly lines up to be the most effective way of balancing the stats for damage so as a goal mid to late game for a dps aim for 90% crit rate aim for 100 to 150% attack and 100 to 150% crit damage if you cannot make the crit rate threshold do not build crit damage focus just on attack and then once your attack hits around 100 to 150% start pushing your crit up as well so that leaves as a stat priority attack bonus crit rate crit damage after that you can look towards rage regen rage regen efficiency and attack speed i would also recommend some hp bonus and potentially some defense bonus as well as this can help your unit stay alive. In particular for fighters, they may need this. If you're using them to block, then you can put a higher focus on HP subs and it is very valuable to do so. Now, in terms of healers and defenders, they don't really change a lot 
they'll be pretty much the same throughout. You build them tanky. I think the later you get, the more you can focus on offensive subs. But again, avoid crit damage. It's just going to take too much investment to make them tanky and have high enough crit. That's more for quite a late game build. Rage regen efficiency and rage regen is very good for these units instead. In terms of gear sets, if you're starting to get to the point where you're able to put together decent gear sets, the ones you'll want to focus, if you're progressing in gear raid 2 but you haven't reached stage 14 yet, you won't have unlocked the additional new sets, so they won't be relevant. This is I will cover this more in the end game section. So in the mid towards end game, I'm assuming that you're up to stage 13 potentially, but you're not quite at 14 plus. So in gear raid 2, you'll have Guardian, Fatality and the Curse. The Curse and Fatality are decent. The, the Curse is particularly good for AoE, for Mages. Fatality is generally okay for Marksmen and some Fighters since it's penetration damage. If you're progressing in Gear Raid 3 up to 14 where you'll start to get more of the more interesting drops. So before 14 then you'll be getting Mana Spring, Hawk Eye and Shield Breaker. Mana Spring is a very good set if you have units who use their ultimate a lot such as Shark King and Sit Nauta. A lot of Marksmen and Mages and Healers will be very beneficial to have this set on. Hawk Eye is very good for Marksmen as it grants bonus damage once you've landed X amount of shots for a duration. This is of course better for Marksmen because they have the range to keep shooting for longer whereas Fighters will have more periods of downtime. And again for Gear Raid Run, assuming you have not reached stage 14 and you are getting the default set still. Remedy is still the best set for healers, the tower is the best set for tanks, the fury is best for mages and marksmen and other units who rely heavily on their ultimate. Again sitting out a shark king. The devastator increases damage so that is a, a good attack bonus set for most DPS units and Ravage will give you 10% crit rate. This will be particular for units that are reliant on having high crit chance to enact their skills, abilities and talents. Now once again I would stress the fact if you cannot meet your stat goals such as DPS hitting enough attack or enough crit rate then the gear set falls short of that unless the gear set would help you achieve your goal, the stat goal. Now we will move on to discussing end game gear. I am only just into this now so please leave comments if you have corrections for me. My belief from looking into gear and what you can gain based on different slots and what the maximums are. Most of the time, once again, you're going to be aiming for a 100% crit chance on a DPS. 90% is still acceptable because obviously hitting dead on 100% is not easy and excess is wasted. So 90 to 100% is ideal for crit chance. And once again, you are just going to, once you've reached that point, be pushing attack and crit damage up in parallel as much as you can. Once again, what this results in is that you will tend to have a attack bonus, a crit damage and a crit chance. Again, the excess slots you will want stuff for rage regen and for attack speed. Some units may want a lot of attack speed if they have effects which are procced based on hits such as Salazar. He has a chance to bleed on hit so attack speed is very good for him and more of a priority than other things such as crit damage potentially. If you are a DPS unit that has a very important ultimate, rage regen and rage regen efficiency are very important subs and if they're fighters like Salazar and Salavik then HP bonus and defense bonus become quite important as well but the stat goals I would say for a late game DPS you're going to be aiming for again 90 to 100 percent crit chance ideally closer to 100 percent and you're going to be pushing your attack to 150 to 200 percent and again crit damage 150 percent as well now one of the difficulties with this is that if you notice a level 16 myth gear crit chance item has 60 percent crit chance if you're aiming for 90 to 100 percent that means you need to make up 20 percent in each sub on your other items in order to hit 100 percent or at least 15 to reach 90 percent now what that means is that if you find a piece of attack or crit damage gear that does not have crit chance as a sub its usefulness is significantly reduced running two myth gear crit chance items is not ideal because you'll just overblow it you'll hit 120 percent crit chance and you're wasting a lot of the main stat there so it's a bit fiddly at this point. You need a crit chance, ideally, unless you have absolutely god tier rolls. I think if you get perfect rolls on free items for crit chance, you can hit basically 100% if it is literally the maximum bar. Free super high rolls as well would get you up to around 30%. I believe the maximum that a crit chance sub can roll is about 33.3%. So if you're rolling super high, then the super optimal gear sets, then you would have probably attack, attack, crit damage 
as your mains and you would have crit chance at 30 percent in each of them which is very hard to attain for gear sets for late game on the left raf is a good set if you have 90 to 100 percent crit chance if you do not have 90 to 100 percent crit chance then you'll be wanting the arcane set instead which gives you 15 percent attack and you can see this is a 10 percent down from the raf set so it's definitely better to take the raf set if you have high enough crit chance and your stats are mostly balanced between attack and crit damage if you are a unit that requires attack speed to proc their effects then there is an agility set for 50 attack speed that is worth taking as well on the right side if you are a single target attacker the main sets that you'll want to focus from gear raid 2 once you've started clearing stage 14 onwards you start to get access to the glacier night terror and the sticks the Glacier is a set that gives you a bonus to your attack based on a percentage of your max HP. Night Terror grants you increased attack speed whenever you land a crit for 3 seconds on a cooldown of 10 seconds. And the Sticks gives you a flat increase to AoE damage by 15%. So obviously the Sticks is great for AoE mages such as Zealous and Ajax. And Night Terror is great for units that have high crit chance but also want attack speed to proc effects. For I have this on Salazar for that reason. I also have this on Raph for that reason since he has effects that apply on X number of hits. The Glacier is ideal for defenders as it will give them some attack to make them more relevant. This would be a good set for Captain Ree for example. Also Salavik would actually benefit a lot from this set. He is a fighter but he has one of the highest base stats in the game if not the highest. From Gear Raid 3, once you've started clearing 14+, plus, which I haven't, you will start gaining the Wisdom, the Insight, and the Doom sets. The Doom increases single target damage by 15%, so this is also a very ideal set for someone like Salazar or Raph. The Insight set grants additional damage on every single target attack equal to 8 times the caster's level. So if your unit is max level at 60, then they'll be doing 480 true damage, which means it avoids all resistances on every attack. This is especially ideal on a unit to attack very fast, such as Tazira. The Wisdom grants an increase in damage by 20% after using an ultimate skill for 10 seconds. This is quite niche and most of the time you're better off getting one of the flat 15% bonuses. So with all the gear sets considered, assuming you're able to hit all of your stack goals and hit the thresholds correctly, for DPS units, if you are a marksman, the majority of the time you are going to want Hawkeye. For AoE mages, you're going to want the sticks for the 15% guaranteed damage. And for single target DPS, you're going to want the Doom set. Primarily, perhaps in some scenarios, you might want Night Terror if you have things propped based on the frequency of attacks. A good general piece of advice if you are really late game and you're looking to see how to progress and what to do, go to Guild Feature, Guild Boss, and go to Nightmare 4. Hit this graph button in the top right and then have a look at the top damage. Well done Moors and Lewis. Moors is a great guy by the way so he's a very good person for reference. If you look at his units on display you can see that most of his single target units are from the Doom set. His marksmen are all taking Hawkeye set and most of his DPS continue to take the crit chance. Lewis seems to be using Shield Breaker quite a lot, which helps, I guess, with the Guild Boss in particular. So you can build differently for different things. So you may wish to, if you're building specifically for Guild Boss, you may want to take Shield Breaker. Generally, other sets that give you a fixed percentage damage are going to be better across more content. So it depends how late game you are and what you're focusing on. I think that about covers gear. It's been quite a long video, so well done if you've made it this far. If you have any comments, questions, ideas, concepts, please let me know, leave a comment below, I'll get back to you or message me in game or however you want to contact me. I'm quite interested to learn more about this. I've started working on a small document as well to contain all of the different main stats and sub stats so you can see roughly what the brackets are. I'll attach a link to that in the description below so do check that out. And yeah, thanks again for watching. Have a great night. Bye bye.